Thank you, Dyson, for sponsoring today's video. What are you doing? My new death setup. This is this is it? Yeah. The, the new setup? Yeah. You don't wanna change color, you know, same monitor, no. same PC, new MacBook, no? You don't wanna copy Siobhan, move C. Same not like sure this probably a bad Let's get on the point. This here's my favorite place on earth and you might be thinking, well, that's odd. Not really, it's the place I spend 50% of my time in and it's important for me to be comfortable with it. I've been working on fine tuning this desk setup for the longest time and I think this is probably it. I don't feel like there's a need for upgrading or replacing much because, to be honest, I find it utterly fulfilling. Here's my desk setup tour of the ultimate desk setup. First, I'd like to address the big elephant in the room, these stacked monitors and believe it or not, the top monitor I've owned ever since I started creating content. It's been such a solid monitor and I really don't want to get rid of it. The way I stacked this was with the help of a vivo pole, we actually bought the pole and the pneumatic arm separately because I wanted a solid set to be able to hold this up like such. This of course attaches to the Dell U3415W, an ultra wide monitor that exists above my main monitor for the sole purpose of running podcasts in the background, taking a look at our Notion filming schedule, file explorer when working on projects, and so on. So no, I do not spend most of my time staring at this trying to break my neck. It also sort of sits on this LG ultra wide 38WP85C display, a monitor we bought last year. There's nothing too special about it except the fact that the colors are great, it's 38 inches of ultra wide and it has USB-C. As a main monitor, to be honest, I cannot recommend this enough. I get to enjoy free sync when playing Call of Duty, it has an IPS panel delivering 3840 by 1600 pixels and the nits are just perfect. Plus, having a different port layout compared to my Dell monitor made me want to use this as the main display, just in case I want to connect my MacBook to it. Now, because these monitors have a good thickness to them, I wasn't afraid to place a light bar all the way on top of the Dell monitor. Luckily, BenQ was smart enough to sell their Halo light with an ultra-wide adapter. Sits super well and it really isn't that heavy, so I'm never freaking out about the fact that this sits so high. Funny enough though, instead of using my computer to power it, I just plug this into the Dell ports and so whenever I just turn on my monitors, the light bar goes on as well. But you can always just use this little wireless remote to turn it on or off, I just happen to use it to control the brightness and the color temperature. With that in mind, this whole thing projects a good amount of light on my peripherals. With all the desk setup accessories videos I've been doing, I finally decided what to keep on this desk. First of all, my mouse and keyboard sit on this super nice wool desk pad by Harbour, London. FYI, this tends to shed a bit so I'm always cleaning my desk and for the longest time I was cleaning with a duster but ever since I got my Dyson V12 to tech slim, it's pretty much taken over the setup and helped me with my cleaning and keeping the desk tidy. It has a bunch of attachments including this mini soft dusting brush that helps clean tricky corners to my desk and my keyboard and it very much complements its single button power control feature instead of a trigger. I've been getting around 60 minutes of runtime while cleaning and the vacuum setup really allows allows me to swap hands while navigating obstacles more seamlessly. And with its laser slim fluffy cleaner head, the precisely angled green laser allows you to see all the microscopic dust on hard floors, it really is a versatile cordless vacuum to have around my desk and home. It's absolutely ideal for small spaces and condo apartment homes. Don't forget that the detangling motor bar works on all types of floors and it's powerful enough to suck up dust and debris from them. I'm talking from experience so make sure to check it out. I also pair the mouse mat with this leather and suede mouse pad to add some color and have less friction when sliding my mouse. By the way, this here is an unbeatable mouse. The G903 not only comes with custom weights, 
extra buttons to remap, and a dongle for its light speed, but it also comes with a great form factor. As much as I love the Razer Viper, this year feels like gaming meets productivity, and it really is the reason as to why I replaced the Viper. Yes, it's quite heavier, but it checks all of my boxes. Amazing battery life, way better than the Viper, cool button assignments, sensitivity and light sync customizations within the software, and the ability to deliver profiles. It does sit a bit high due to its palm grip, and since I come from a Viper, I think that pairing this with a Delta Hub wrist rest makes it even better. Plus, it looks absolutely great next to my new keyboard, which I stole from my gaming desk setup. The Mode Sonnet is the best mechanical keyboard build I've ever come across. Crazy enough, this is quite heavy, it weighs around 8 pounds, I actually configured this to my liking with the website and I have materials like brass, carbon fiber, aluminum and whatnot. When I built this, I had both of the setups in mind which is why I did not go full black. This matte green frame is absolutely amazing and it looks so good on my desk. It pretty much houses a hot swappable PCB with infinite keys, dull UB keycaps, and Gatoron Oil King switches hand loop with Crytox 205 GO. The spacebar is set up with some Duroc V2 stabilizers, also hand loop. Inside there is also a carbon fiber full plate and a silicon based plate foam paired with PE foam. I give it a nice copper bottom and some brush copper accents to match a bit of the orange theme I've got going on, which made me pretty much keep the orange coiled cable I got on Amazon. I really wanted to get a second one for my monogram console, but I think Jan might be on the verge of stealing this console kit from me. I think this board is absolutely amazing for when it comes to editing pictures, videos on Premiere, and much more. Another thing I bought from Amazon was this Focusrite app, and I really like what Focusrite makes and it's exactly why I bought another one. The iTrack Solo is a bit more simple, it doesn't have all the gimmicks that my other one had. I wanted a single XLR channel with a proper audio jack, 48 volts to power my mic, and a monitor knob. I think for the price, this and the Rode AI-1 are very good options. Also, my XLR mic of choice is the Shure SM7B, and the only reason as to why this still sits on my desk is because Jan needed the MV7. Regardless, both mics are absolute kinks at what they do, but because I only use this for calls and gaming now, I think the MV7 would have been the perfect go-to. This mic still sits on the best boom arm in the world, the blue compass with a shock mount, and this whole setup as it is allows me to bring in the mic when I need it and move it out of the way when I don't. It often goes hand in hand with my Audio Technica's M50Xs, the only piece of tech I am thinking of replacing on my desk. Don't get me wrong, the sound these deliver for the price is just unbeatable. I absolutely love them. However, the only reason I want to replace them is because John and I have the same headphones. We often mix them up, so eventually these will get replaced with some Bayer Dynamics. The last item that powers my audio setup are my Audio Engine A5 Plus. Two words, amazing speakers. Bass, mid, and highs are absolutely on point. Aesthetically, these speakers are also very hard to beat. They look so good in matte black, and luckily, they are Bluetooth. I've been using them like such, but I did just recently purchase audio cables to connect these to the Focusrite. This just allows me to pretty much control all of my audio with my audio interface. Now, because of my limited space with my monitor bezels, I do have my webcam sitting on my right speaker. I know it's super odd, and I know this thing is massive, but this is one of the best webcams I've owned. Reason why is because not only it has its own little light bar, but it also has center stage. Every time we have calls with people, this thing just stays in focus. It's so cool because sometimes I want to show tech sitting on my husky and this thing just follows. Don't get me wrong, the PowerConf P600 is light enough to mount to the monitor bezels, but I've just got no room for it. On top of that, I also barely have any room for my speakers, which is why I have them sitting on this Groovemate desk shelf. I wanted to make room for my audio interface face, some small accessories I keep around at all times, and also my MacBook. I used to have my Xbox Series S chilling here at the bottom, but now I have my MacBook Pro 14-inch chilling from time to time. 
I will say I'm pretty bummed out I managed to scratch the wood with the screw that lives under my LG monitor arm. These really don't scratch that easy but I had no idea I was damaging it by moving the monitor on it. Overall, such a must for a setup where you have limited space, plus it really is a cheat code to hide cables, but I can't cheat my way across the entire desk. In fact, the autonomous cable tray is what helps us here. I use it to rot and very much store all of the cables related to the desk. This includes our lights, monitors, the PC, hubs, and the motors for the desk. I also use some 3M fastened cable ties to hold onto cables, and unlike the desk I'm currently building at home, I had to go out of my way to use Gorilla Tape in order to mount these two power bricks onto the desk. It really isn't the cleanest job in the world, but it does the job. I do get to hide most of my cables and I get plenty of sockets to connect all of our tech. My biggest pet peeve though is the companies making these huge power plugs that pretty much take too much room. It's honestly the only thing I hate about my Kingston dock, but this dock up to now is my favorite dock ever. It's of course powered connects to my PC via USB-C and it's modular so you can buy all of these little autonomous Kingston modules separately. This hub allows me to pretty much use my USB drives, my SD cards, my USB-C cables and so on. It's a very fast dock that delivers great speeds when I transfer footage but the only reason I tried replacing this a few months ago is because I need higher speeds and more readers. I got this SanDisk Pro dock waiting to be used however when I bought it I realized it only works with laptops and so I am currently waiting to bring this home. So the Kingston will be staying here for a while now. One thing that didn't stay here was the Lyra lamp from Govi. I find it looks so much better next to the TV. However, I needed something to replace it and I got a gantry floor lamp. This looks so freaking good here and I paired it with an E12 Hue bulb. This with my aim table light, my Hue bars, the Hue grating light strip, my Govi glide wall light and my Hue flank light very much represented the entirety of my lighting situation. The only way I was able to get away with automation when it came to the aim table lamp and the Govi is because of Hue plugs and Google Home. So when you combine all of it together, it allows for me to use my Google speaker in order to control the status of my lights. But if I wish, I can also just use the Google Home app in order to tweak a few things here and there. I don't know if you guys noticed that I said represented. Reason why is because I literally just bought an aperture lighting setup for this corner. It was the very last thing missing here in my opinion and it really brings a lot more light to this setup. I can still automate it whether it's by using the Hue app, Google Home or Citus Link. And so as a whole, yes, lighting for me is essential. It really brings out the entirety of my setup. It's important because sometimes I use my Elgato arm with this Manfrotto quick release plate to mount my camera and film TikToks. I really like how easy it is for me to set up this whole thing here and have it whenever I need to. My plant, notepads, pens, and charging station all get the benefit from proper lighting. It makes my GrooveMate headphone stand look good and it makes the wood of my GrooveMate pencil cup look even better. It's part of the reason and I flank light on my Belkin Boost Charger Pro. By the way, I highly recommend you get one. I'm about to buy another one for my nightstand at the condo. The fact that you can charge your watch, AirPods, your iPhone at arm's reach is unbelievable. I do wish my phone charged faster, but it does the job. Okay, so all of this lighting very much complements my paint of choice, Gray Ash by Bear. And no, I will never change this. It actually looks so good with our canvases from our Canvox store. Both the paint and the canvases really complete the whole look of the entire setup and the look of the Govi glide wall light. Plus, next to it, I added my YouTube plaque with some soundproof foam on the left wall and to complete the whole set, on the right wall, a canvas Jan and I just made for fun. Before you guys even ask, this white box is just a switch box we got from Cisco. It just connects a lot of our PCs to the network in the office. This is why we have so many Ethernet cables connected. One of them actually goes to my PC, which powers the entirety of this setup. This here is a Lian Li O11 XL case housing a Ryzen 5950X CPU with 64GB of RAM and a 3080Ti. I absolutely love this whole build, however, lately it's been failing on me. I get weird blue screens and I believe I burned some of the controllers that control my RGB fans. I might just upgrade the CPU with a 7950X and the GPU to a 4090, but for now, I will just stick to it. If my problems ever get worse, I'll make the switch. For the longest time, I've been extremely happy with it. However, I just wish the fans didn't pick as much dust and weren't so loud. To mitigate some of that dust and 
dryness in my space, especially as the weather begins to get colder, we've had this Dyson Purifier Humidify Plus Cool Formaldehyde ever since we moved in here. The Dyson Purifier senses and captures pollutants and measures the level of moisture in the air automatically. Then, it projects purified and hygienically humidified air around the whole room using the Air Multiply technology. The HEPA filter captures 99.97% of particles as small as 0.3 microns. Dyson purifiers drop pollutants such as pollen, dust and allergens from every corner of the room. It's a 3-in-1 machine. What's great is that during the winter months I can use the humidifier and during the summer months I can just use the cooling fan. It's able to detect and destroy formaldehyde. By the way, formaldehyde is a colorless gas pollutant and a common source of it can be building materials and household products like furniture, glues, paint and varnishes, air fresheners, and carpets. We typically just leave it on auto mode and we are able to see real-time data on the LCD screen and on the My Dyson app. I absolutely love controlling this with my phone, but you can always just control it through its remote control. It's a great all-in-one device to have in an office space and I totally recommend you guys check it out. All of this tech sits close and on a Carl by countertop from IKEA that I drilled to these autonomous legs. It's my favorite setup for now, but I'm currently working with Ergonomics office to build a nicer desk at home. I got legs from Ergon office and a cable management rack from them that I feel like it will give a better aesthetic if I was to compare it to this. But I love this autonomous standing desk, it does the job and allows for me to store both of these Alex stores on the side. I won't show you what's inside because currently these are a complete mess, but I will show you one of my latest addition to the setup, my Embody chair. Herman Miller, if you're watching this, I absolutely love this chair. This one in particular was a collaboration they had with Logitech and I honestly really find it so comfortable and worth it. After owning this for about 6 months now, I will say my only complaints are the weird sound it makes when you stretch, the annoying tiny squeaks when you move, and the fact that the material is so static. So every time I get up, my clothes get filled with static and I shock everything it's really really annoying but when it comes to comfort nothing comes close to it my shoulder finally doesn't hurt after all this time and my lower back hamstring and posture feel a lot better i absolutely love it i recommend you give one a try this is very much an update for my ultimate desk setup i know a lot of you guys love this setup and i thought it would be nice to give you an update as of now there's very little i'd want to change i'm actually so happy with the way this space feels and i'm happy to share it with you Heck, you guys can even copy it if you really want to. Next year, a few things might be changing, but as of now, I have no plans for it. I will for sure let you know if I do so, so stay tuned. Hope you guys liked the video. I'm signing out. Take care.